If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, Trump knows a thing or two about personal branding. I actually have a background in marketing, which might be surprising to any of you who follow me on social media, but when you are trying to build a brand, truth and authenticity are certainly important, but perception is really what's going to draw in the audience that you're looking for. And Donald Trump knows this. That's why he stood outside of the Capitol for the cameras the day he returned home from the hospital with COVID. That's why he released those ridiculous NFTs of him doing things he could never do in real life, looking a way that he's never looked in real life. And then there's this. As Donald Trump's <laughs> legal bills continue to mount, he literally is selling the suit off of his back to make more money. You may remember last Come year, on. the former president announced a digital trading card collection featuring these images of him as George Washington crossing the Delaware, a WWE champion. Possible. Well, now Trump is back with what he's calling the mugshot edition of those cards, featuring a very special deal for a limited time only. And that's why his rhetoric often is incredibly hypocritical. And remember this, Joe Biden is a threat to democracy. He's a threat. And that's why he pulled this latest stunt on social media. Trump posted two screenshots on Truth Social of a Newsweek article, but before he posted them, he edited out the parts that he didn't like. The article headline is, quote, Donald Trump poised to be first Republican to win popular vote in 20 years. First of all, that's very sad and very telling in more ways than one, but the headline was not edited by Trump. That is the real Newsweek headline. But despite what the headline might lead one to believe, the article wasn't entirely complimentary to Trump, so he made it more flattering. The screenshot shows half a page of text, but the text was taken from the top of the article. It shows five paragraphs, and it was written in a font different from the one that I see on the article itself. He added ellipses here and there to suggest that text had been omitted. Now, usually when that happens, or I should say, that's really only supposed to happen when a quote is being shortened for brevity, clarity, and relevance. However, it's not supposed to alter the overall message of what's being quoted. It's supposed to alert readers that there's more to this quote than what they're being given, just for transparency's sake. Of course, this practice gets abused and misused, especially in the world of politics or public relations, but at this point, what is the difference between the two? Anyway, the fact that it's posted as a screenshot suggests that he was hoping to maybe mislead his audience into thinking that this was a screenshot from the article itself. In other words, his audience would read this, assume that this was part of the article as written, and they might not even pay attention to the ellipses. The ellipses are there for cover. The Trump team knows that the average social media using Trumpster isn't going to fact check this screenshot, nor will they pay much attention to the fact that information has been omitted. That's at least partly human nature, and from a branding perspective, it's understandable that a Trump fan would take away the general gist of what the Trump team wants them to take away. So here is what Trump took out. First, he starts his screenshot at the third paragraph of the article where Newsweek reports that an NBC poll found Trump winning 47% of the popular vote compared to Biden only winning 42%. Trump removed the fourth paragraph, saying he and his team were reached out to for a comment, and that's totally fine. Remember, brevity, clarity, and relevance, it's not the most important part of the article. But then he removed a line pointing out that he lost the popular vote to Hillary Clinton by nearly 3 million votes in 2016, despite winning the election that year, and he removed a line saying that no Republican had won the popular vote since Bush's re-election in 2004. It makes sense that he wouldn't want to remind his base that the Republican Party nor its platform are actually popular in this country. Then he highlighted the poll results saying that he had a 16-point lead over Biden in terms of competence and effectiveness, but he left out the part that said those results flipped when Trump's potential felony convictions were taken into consideration. The next bit he left fairly intact, but it's interesting where he chose to cut the quote. It talked about how when a president wins a popular vote, it gives the president more pull with legislatures. That president is able to, quote, wield the popular mandate card in hopes of convincing legislatures and rivals to consent to presidential wishes. So when Professor James Vike of Widener University said this, I'm going to assume that he didn't mean this with any kind of authoritarian lean. 
I'm assuming he was just speaking in terms of influence and being seen as a legitimate, democratically elected leader. Trump quotes Dr. Mark Shanahan of the University of Surrey saying he, quote, agreed winning the popular vote would give Trump a stronger mandate. So that's where Trump cut the quote. But Dr. Shanahan went on to say that this would be a quote unquote pipe dream for Trump. So Trump's screenshot ends here, but here is what Dr. Shanahan told Newsweek, quote, winning the popular vote would need an alliance of young voters, women, and minorities to vote for Trump. That's unlikely. A win of a majority of voters would give him a stronger mandate, legitimizing his position as America's choice. But it is wishful thinking on his part. His core MAGA base gives him 30 to 35 percent of the vote. Above that, the reality is he'll be playing the political game and trying to pick off particular groups in key swing states. For someone as divisive as Trump, winning the national vote would mean having to win the big populous states on the East and West Coast. That remains a pipe dream. And rounding out the article, another bit that Trump left out was a quote from Heath Brown, an associate professor of public policy at City University of New York, warning not to get too caught up in polling, especially not this early in the race. He said of the race between Trump and Biden, quote, it's going to be a tight race and winning the popular vote a goal of both candidates. So there you have it. Again, it's not unusual for people in public positions or people pushing a certain type of agenda to cherry pick quotes, omit context, or generally just chase a certain narrative. It happens all the time. People from both sides of the political aisle do it. The media does it. You probably do it on your college essays or on your work reports. All I'm saying is to be vigilant in your media consumption, question things, and do your best to refer to original sources. Overall, just be skeptical because everybody out there is trying to dupe you. Am I trying to dupe you? I don't think so, but maybe on a subconscious level, I don't know, who knows? Be careful out there. All right, that's it for me. If you got anything out of this, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and check out my podcast, Modern Context. Thanks.